Hey YouTube subscribers and everybody else that is about heavenly stuff. This video today is talking about how to be an overcomer and what it means to be an overcomer and how you go about being one and how important it is that you become an overcomer. Okay, and I will be citing scriptures showing you from the Bible what the Savior said, what the implications of being an overcomer are and how why it's so important that therefore you understand what an overcomer is. Okay, now you will remember in Revelations that the Savior is splashing this overcomer promises that if you're an overcomer, he will grant you it of true. I mean, he has a long list of promises that if you're an overcomer, he will. I just put a few of them up there that he will do this for you. He will put you up there. He will do this and that. So that shows how serious it is. If you want to be somewhere, somebody in heaven. When he comes, then you want to be an overcomer. So this video is showing you how to be that overcomer. So I won't be reading word for word. I'm just showing you a few parts in the book of Revelation, which is now the future. It's not something that's nailed on course of the past. It's something that's future. It's a promise. What's going to happen if you are an overcomer? Why it's important that you must be an overcomer. Okay. All right. Now, here are basic principles. I need to pull, pull up a picture for you so you can understand that this is what I'm working from. This is the premise that we are departing from. Okay. This is what we're existing under. All right. So I need you to understand that there are two schools of thought or two, two, two lines. Okay. Two areas, two, whatever. I, I don't want, well, I don't know what you want to call it, label it, but there's the Roman employees and then there's the Jews. Now the, there's, there's solely, um, the ones that's been lately awakened. The black people calling themselves Jews or Bantu or whatever. So those are the real Jews. So there's that side and then there's the Roman employees side. Okay. Now the Roman employees side that the, 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 the Romans who started the Christianity. Now the Romans, which are, they've got a Pope or they got Christianity. Okay, which is, I, I know a lot of people are calling themselves Christians because they think they're following Jesus. But I'm just showing you two sides here. The two, one side is the one that's been orchestrated by the Romans. Okay, now it's got uh, the, the ones who started the Christianity, which is, which is the Romans themselves. And then they got St. Peter, who wrote the first Peter, second Peter or something. Like. And then, which is in the Bible. And then the Pope John, who wrote the first John, second John. You know those Johns, three Johns. And then we got St. Paul, who wrote about 18 books in the Bible. Okay? So I won't go into details on which books, what, but we know the epistles of Paul, Galatians, Acts. Okay, Acts was written by Paul and Luke. I mean, this rumor, but he was involved. So we got Galatians, we got first uh, Ephesians, Hebrews, first this Corinthians. We, he got almost about 18 books in there. Okay? And we got St. Peter. Peter. Who wrote for now that Peter is not one of the 12 apostles, Peter. Okay, I've, I've spoken about it in the other video that I made where I'm showing you exactly why I'm saying the book of the first Peter and second Peter, which is towards the end of the New Testament, is not the same Peter that we see him speaking in the book of John. Okay, that's not the same Peter. Okay, that other Peter, first Peter and second Peter, towards Jude, towards the end of the Bible, that Peter is a lawyer. You can tell. From the manner, the way he writes, I mean, you can tell a lawyer by. I mean, if you speak to a lawyer, they always be using certain kind of words, certain kind of lingo. Those are lawyers, you can tell. Paul, same thing, he was a lawyer, same fashion, okay? And Luke, Luke was a doctor, but you can tell that he is, um, he's friends with the lawyers. So whatever he wrote there is something that he copied from Mark, and they were all sharing notes. A lot of it is copy and paste, exactly copy and paste, same word for word. I mean, if somebody's sitting at home writing a book, he won't have used exactly word for word somebody else's book, unless they were sitting together at some point sharing notes, you know. So that's what happened with Paul um, and his friends. That's, so they're all in the same Mark, Luke, uh, the writer of Matthew. Now, the writer of Matthew, the book of Matthew is not written by Matthew. You can watch my other video. I got about 92 videos exposing all of this stuff and sharing with you a lot of information. So I'm not going to bring all 92 books into this video right here. So if you want to know more information about how I'm demarcating these two 
Romans on one side and Jews. How I'm arriving at this, you can watch my other video that detailing how Paul killed the church, how these Romans are fake, how these fake Jews right now, the ones that are called in Israel, the white people in Israel, why are they fake? You can watch my other videos that are all showing evidence in the cause. I'm going into detail in those videos here. I'm not going to detail into that line, okay? So now here is information. Christian, the Christianity started by Romans. So in one side, we've got all these traitors. I call them traitors. On one side, on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we've got, um, the Old Testament prophets. We said, now this is the real deal. On the right hand side, we've got the real people. We've got the creator himself speaking through all the other people, different people in the Old Testament, Moses and them. Okay. Tell my people, Jeremiah, go there. Ezekiel, do this, okay? So this, the Creator Himself is talking in the in in this other in the right hand side. And the Savior Himself is talking, okay? Is quoted in the different books. Now, and the twelve apostles did write, but their books only they only took the Book of John and Revelations from the twelve apostles, and they didn't take none of the other ones, which is very unfair to the doctrine, okay? But then on the left hand side, they took eighteen books from just one guy, Paul. And then they took further Mark, Luke, and some other people we don't even know when they come, where they come from. But they're all friends with the Romans. Okay? Excuse me. And Timothy and them. I didn't even write all of them names, but all of them are there. James, Jude, and them. They said, no, they were brothers of the Savior and stuff. The Savior did not collude with his family. You know the scripture. Okay? So he didn't even choose those brothers of his to be his, um, his apostles or even disciples. So... We, we, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but you can see there's two lines, okay? If you don't see these two lines, you are still lost because you're going to start mixing the, the writing from the left-hand side to the le writing on the right-hand side. You can't mix these two. You've got to always see this dividing line, big dividing line between the two. And when you read the Bible, read it with that mindset that there's writing from the people, the real people on the left-hand side, which is now the, Jew, the real Jews. When I say Jews, I'm not talking about the white people in Israel right now. I'm talking about the real Jews, okay? Which is called the Bantu people, in other words. But, so, it's the Creator Himself, the Old Testament, the New Testament, two books, Revelations and the Book of John, okay? Now, the Book of Matthew, which was written by somebody else, it's all in third person, you'll see. Written by somebody else saying he's writing for Matthew. It's not, it's not written by Matthew. He's writing for Matthew. And, and Matthew was a, a, a learned person. I mean, to do your taxes, just sit down and try to do your tax returns. You, not anybody. Get, he was a learned person whose job was to do taxes, tax returns for everybody. So he can know who owes how much to the government. That's a learned person. He's not somebody who don't know, who, who won't know how to write. So Matthew, Matthew was not sitting there asking somebody else to write. Okay. So Luke, was not one of the apostles. Mark was not, and I won't even go into detail. The only reason why I'm discussing Matthew is because Matthew was one of the 12 apostles, but he did not write a book that was taken. Because I'm sure those 12 apostles probably wrote books, but the Romans did not want to accept their books. You can see though they just wanted to start their Christianity and fashion it in some way they, they wanted it, the way it is right now. Okay, with a whole lot of loopholes and dark stuff. Okay, mixing truth and the false, right? So now you now I'm introducing this slide so y'all can understand when we're discussing further, you have this mindset that we've got two scopes, two lines, two spheres, two battles, two, you know, so see the two stuff I'm talking about, okay? You've got the real people in there. Now, let's look at the books, like I just told you. we got the Old Testament, then now these are books of the Bible. Now when you start to go out to read, trying to look for how to be an overcomer and everything, I'm giving you a background where you're going to be looking at. But I'll discuss with you how to be an overcomer, but I'll still refer you to the scripture because that's where we all got to be agreeing to. I got everything we say, got to agree with the scripture. And you will not find the scripture in the books by the Roman side, which is all those people, the St. Paul and the Romans employees and all those, you will, you will not find scripture over there. You will instead get con more and more confused because a lot of the things that they write will clash with the 12 apostles, will clash with the Old Testament people, will clash with what the Savior said himself, will clash with what the Creator said himself. So you don't want to, you know, dig and dive, read between the lines because some of the stuff these Roman employees write is true. 
So they, they write the true story, they can draw you in to start reading them and start believing. And then they splash in, you know, they are false within you. And then you get confused and start thinking, but how did, they, how did Father say, why is he saying don't love the world? And then he, he goes on to say, he loved the world and gave it. Why is he, then you start questioning things. You don't question the Jews, the real people using the Roman writers. You can't mix the two. Okay, so that's why I introduced this slide from the onset so you can understand there's two writers. The book, the Bible is a compilation of all of them writings, but the Romans decided whose writings, whose books can be included in that file. I call it the file, the Bible, which is like a file, you file all the books that are chosen. Okay, so now you will not find, you will not, I repeat, you will not find scripture when you read. When you read, I repeat, when you read, you got to understand this. When you read the Roman employee stuff, you will instead get confused. So when you read the Roman employee stuff, compare. If you got time now to be compared, compare it with the, the real people, the, the ones that I just showed you now, which is the Old Testament people. Everything that the Old Testament people is it's wrote in there, it has to agree with what those Roman people employees is saying. Okay, so what Paul Epistle saying, what Luke, Mark, and all of them, everything they're saying has to agree with the Old Testament, has to also agree with what the apostles, with, with the, now the book of John and Revelation, that's all we got in the New Testament. Old Testament, good, they gave us everything. But the New Testament, we got only John and Revelations, that's it. All those other ones are not the 12 apostles, are not the Savior, are not, they are not anybody. They're not the people that firsthand walked walk with the Savior, okay? Is Paul writing to, to Corinthians? He thinks it's all that, writing letters, telling what, them what to do. Now, these, I'm, I've labeled it in green, J, Jews. So J and J, Revelation and John, and the Old Testament. That's where you got to be focused at. Read, read, understand, so that whatever you pick up in Colossians, Philippians, and everybody else, you can already see if it's error or it's not because you already know the Old Testament. You already know John and Revelation. You already know the real people deal, right? The scripture. You already know it. Then whatever they throw your way, you you will see firsthand that is false because you know the scripture. But if you don't know at all, you keep getting confused. Corinthians, then you don't know. You get confused. You start arguing, putting up arguments like all the other Christians arguing with each other. Because they're confused. Okay. So now, let's go back to overcomer. Okay, now, being overcomer, let's pull up something that I need you all to see. Now, this is what the, um, the Roman employees say about overcomer. Okay. Overcomers, they say, no, you got to, it's only through him, through faith. I mean, I'm just showing you now things that you would pick up if you already first read the real people, the, the real Jews writings which is now the old testament john book of john and um and the revelations okay that's where you pick up the real information so if you know the real information you'll see that oh these romans are only because i just put a few um verses that the romans are, are, are saying about being an overcomer because what these romans are trying to push if you read everything about the romans talking about how to be an overcomer if you read everything that those people are writing You'll see that they are only pushing the fact that you have to only focus on the Savior. The faith in the Savior is overcoming. That's what they say. If you have faith in the Savior, you are an overcomer. That's all it takes. That's what they say. And that's wrong. Because the, the Savior said, he himself has overcome. You got your turn. You have to overcome yourself. So looking at the Savior is not overcoming. Overcoming is what you are doing. You have to overcome yourself. You can't just point at the Savior and say, he overcome, so I'm done. I've overcome. No, that's what the Romans is pushing, which is wrong. Okay? So, now, if you, you now in your mind, have that two premises that I was talking about. We've got two premises that we operate departing from. Okay? So, there's the Roman side on the right-hand side. Have the visual mental um, picture of that picture that I showed you. We got On the right-hand side, we've got the real Jews, Bantu people. The writings, which is by them, okay, and for them. Now, the left, the left hand side, what? Okay, the Roman side and the and the Jew side. Let me just go R and the J, 
Okay? Now, the Roman side is saying, no, 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 no. And through him, that's the, that's the overcoming. And then another one, except the one who believes that yeah, it's not just that. Yes, we got to believe. When he came, we got to believe and have faith in him. I mean, even the demons have faith. If, let's say, we, we, we only believe that. If we, now, now I'm talking about the Romans. The Romans and all the people that are writing for the Romans. We say no, because they're saying we only got to have faith in the Savior. And then whatever he did, if we got faith in what he did, he achieved, then we're done. We are overcomers of the world. If we believe that lie, because that's a big lie. That's not overcoming. Yes, we have to believe and have faith in what he did for us, died for us. But that's not, that's not overcoming. Overcoming is you are then doing what he did. You're walking on his footsteps. You're not just pointing, oh, there's footsteps going that way. You're not gone. You are still standing here pointing on the footsteps. You have to walk on those footsteps. You yourself walk and do exactly how he did. All right? That's how you overcome. If he did this, he prayed, he did this, he was the righteous. That's how you should be You're walking the road, not just pointing and say he'd overcome. Because that's what the Romans are doing. They over, they're pointing. They're doing the pointing. You shouldn't be doing that. Okay? So now, there isn't a lot of scriptures that are showing you how to be an overcomer from the perspective of the real Jews, which is a bunch of people. There's not enough because we only got John. The book of John is only, the Savior is only telling us that we have to be, you know, keep, he gives his commandments and the revelation is only talking about this is, these are the people who keep his commandments. This is, we have to keep, you know, walk. Even the carrying of the cross is, is, is in one of Mark. I think Mark and Luke is talking about we have to carry the cross and stuff. At least they are, you know, that's a little bit of a truth there because at least it's agreeing with the revelations, keeping the commandment. It's agreeing with the book of John, keeping the commandment. But then, I mean, the other part that, the other thing that John is talking about, saying, these words are spoken to you that you might have peace. Now, that might have peace is talking, you know, that's not the real, that's John, book of John. You might have peace, that means you must, because they were, they were depressed. They were not at peace with their mind. So he's saying, these words I'm, I've spoken to, you know, he was talking to the 12 apostles, telling them what is going to happen, this is what's going to, he's going to go up to heaven, you know, saying all the bad and good stuff that's going to happen after, okay? So he's saying, so that they can be consoled, okay, that, that you might have peace. So in the world you have pressure, but take courage, because he have overcome the world, okay? Now, that is all about overcoming that we are given in the real Jews then Mark and them, Paul and John, they be splashing. No, pointing at him. Pointing, look at him. In faith in him, that's all it takes. And they put 20,000 reasons, 20,000 things about how to overcome. Trying to bury this real one that says, you have to, he, only him. He, the, the Savior says, I have overcome. He doesn't say, when you believe in me, then you've overcome. Say, I've overcome the world. You must just have peace in your mind because I've overcome. I will prepare. I don't know if you all understand what I'm saying, but anyway, because I keep, you know, talking about the same, circling around the same thing. So now let's proceed. Now, what is there for, what, what does overcome mean? Let me pull up a picture for you. Let me pull up a picture that will explain to you more about what is to overcome. Okay, you remember in the book of Revelation that other picture where the woman's closing the sun, sitting on the moon. He's standing on the moon, this woman, okay? He's closing the sun. That means he's full righteous. A woman is, is the church. It's what the, the people call church. Church, church, I call, church is people, believers, a group of believers. It's how, is the nature of the followers of the Savior. Okay, that's called church. The followers of the Savior. Let me call it. Okay, so now, but, People think church is the building that they go and congregate with other people. No, that's not, the, that's just a building. Church is the followers, the people, actual people go there. Okay. So this woman represents the church. Okay. So the 12 stars of this woman's head is what you should be looking. Now you are this woman. You should be this picture. Okay. I'm giving you now, I'm paving a way so that you can understand what I'm, I'm trying to explain to you, what to be an overcomer. To be an overcomer is to be this picture. Okay, where the things of the world are where that moon is staying. So you are oppressing, you are standing on top of the things of the world. Like that woman overcame the time. It's timeless, it's, it's going to be forever. 
That's now revelations in future. Okay, so she's standing on the moon. Moon is is the signs of the times, time changing of the time. So when she's oppressing time, that means she's timeless. Okay, that's what that revelation is. So you now let's say you we're plugging you now how you should be. You should be clothed with the sun, full righteousness. Everything you are doing should be righteous. Okay, clothed with the sun. And you should be standing on the things of the world, overcome the things of the world, flamboyance, prestige, glory, rich, everything that is a thing of the world, overcome it. You must subdue it, stand on top of it, okay? And the crown of your stars, your glory instead, okay? Your glory instead must be what the 12 apostles was teaching, which is the same thing that this woman's glory is, the 12 stars, you see? So the king, queen, whatever, is not a queen if the if she's not having a crown, she's just a regular queen. But put a crown on her, that is a glory that shows that she what she is. So that church, you now, you follower, you should have that crown, which is what is your crown? Crown is that same crown that she's crowned with. The twelve, what the twelve apostles were teaching. Okay, but now the Bible will only show you what Book of John and Revelations, and those two always anyway agree with what the Old Testament is saying. Okay, because the Old Testament is saying the things that are repeated in, in the book of John are repeated in, in the book of Revelations. Yes, some of it will be repeated in some of the Roman writers. But the danger in you focusing on the Roman writers is you start picking other false things that get you confused. So the first thing you got to be doing is to focus on the on the um on the on the book of John and the Revelation, which is now the only two books that is written by the real people apostles okay and then the, the 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 old testament those are the only two places that you can find anything that is real that is scripture okay so now when, when you start reading this then you must know that you gotta be this woman you gotta be this picture okay so that's the starting point if you know exactly and understand what the revelations 12 one is talking about then you plug yourself in there and be that church be that follower that kind of a follower who's fully righteous governed by the 12 apostles on your head, okay, and standing on the things of the world. That's how you should be if you are an overcomer. Because an overcome, to be an overcomer is, is a full-time thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not an, a situational, okay, I want this bag, I'll overcome you, boom, that's it, you're, you're down on the floor. No, that's not overcome, that's winning a battle. No, you don't want to just win situational and then somebody tempted, you wanted you to go to a club, wanted you to do this thing and you overcome that, you overcome that and you think you're an overcomer. No, the devil is going to bring something else on the door and that one of them things is going to eventually get you if you are not an overcomer. An overcomer is somebody whose, whose lifestyle is an overcomer, okay? You fully just lost interest, complete interest in the things of the world. Things of the world are under your feet. You just don't feel like, like it's like you never do drugs, right? So somebody else come to you and say, hey, here's a sniff, one or two, cocaine or something. And I mean, that person won't make sense. That's how the world should be to you. Things of the world should be like that. Like this person is crazy. He's talking about we're going to be bribing and stealing money and going, you know, doing stuff. Those things should be not, you should not be interested in doing stuff like that. Unless you are put on a right corner, I mean, cow in a dish situation, then you have to defend yourself, you know, strike or two. Then, yeah, you are, you are in a tight corner. You had no other choice. It's a cow in a dish. You got to heal that person on Sabbath day. So those situational things, yeah, we understand is desperate. But if you're not desperate, you don't have to do something, don't do it if it's a sin. So you, you, you don't do it. Not because you're telling yourself you're trying to keep the law, because that's not an overcomer. It's it's, an, it's somebody who's just keeping the law, like all the the Pharisees who are trying to keep the law. And those are not overcomers, because any temptation will come your way. Guess what? You give in, because you are not overcomer. You have to put on overcomer as a lifestyle. Fully lose interest in all the things of the world. Be that picture, and focus on. Scripture, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm telling you how the lifestyle is. Because if I tell you, that's like, it's like an instruction to the law. You, you don't keep the law, you leave the law. Okay, it's, it's part of your lifestyle. Okay, so you focus on the stuff of the, well, you know, I'm giving you examples of, of the, um, of the um, symptoms. 
Okay, things that we see that manifest through you when you are an overcomer. Okay, that means you've overcome the things of the world, you've overcome the world. Same as the Savior did. He didn't do it for you. He didn't overcome the world for you. You have to overcome the world yourself or the world will overcome you, take you over and you'll be an addict somewhere down the aisle. Okay, so you, you have to overcome yourself. Not the Savior did his part to pave the way for you. He did the way so that you can have a place to walk on. Okay, so you still got to do the walk. Okay, that's what I need you all to understand. Now, here's something else I need I need just, you know, sprung on your face for some reason or not. Just something that will give you a thought. You remember now those original two pictures I was talking about earlier on? Where we got the Roman employees on one side, we got the real Jews called Bantu these days on one side. Okay, those two sides. Now, here, if you read on the Roman employee books, okay, You'll see there's something that I picked up. I mean, I'm still doing a study on it because it's something that didn't really make sense to me, but it's a pattern that I just picked up. I just picked up it actually today that none of the, um, all, okay, let me start with the Roman, all of the Roman books, the Savior is negotiating with these demons. And when you look at the book of John and Revelations and the Old Testament, there's no place where the Savior or even the father sending himself is negotiating with the demons. Nowhere. Now, in the book of John, when the Savior was healing, was healing the, um, the people, I mean, he healed uh, one, somebody on the porch, you know, remember? He just told those people, you are healed, your sins is forgiven, and that other woman crawled and touched his, you know, he, 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 he didn't speak with the demons. Now, in the book of John and Revelation, I'm talking about the book of John and Revelation, the ones from the real apostles. I'm not talking about the friends of Paul and Paul and all the Roman writers. The Roman writers, the Savior is negotiating with the, the, the demons, which does not appear, not even once, in the, in, the, um, in the book of John and Revelation, in the book by the apostles. Let me just say, books by the apostles, none of the apostles are talking about the Savior negotiating with the demons only the Romans. Why? Why? I mean, I, even even the, the, the simple temptations on the mountain. Remember when the Savior went and was tempted by the devil? The devil is a demon too. He was tempted by the demon. Book of John says nothing, not even a hint that the, 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 the Savior would be tempted on the mountain by the devil. It doesn't say anything about that. That's now the apostle, the only book by the apostle that's shown. I'm sure even if they were to show the book by the real Peter, the book by the real other writers of the 12 apostles, they won't fish anything about the Savior was, was negotiating with the devil and the devil picked him up and put him, well, I mean, how does he even pick him up and put him on the mountain? And the Savior is just walking along with the, with the devil. Hey, tempt me now. What else? Are you, what have you got scheduled for me today? No, no, no. The Savior did not compromise with the demons. The demons didn't even come close to him. They flew. The minute the Savior said, your sins forgiven. Oh, oh, tabata kum. That means take life from me when he was healing that little girl. Or when he was healing the general's uh, daughter, the general's son or daughter. I can't remember it was a daughter or son. The general, the official, officer. He just said, your son, oh, it was a son. Your son is, is going to get up. He's, he's, he's healed. He didn't talk about no demons, leave him and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, the, the, I mean, the other, in Bethsaida. Remember that pool of Bethsaida and when people who were lame get in there? The Savior went in there. He didn't talk about the demon, lame, you lame demon, get out of the person and the person springs up. That's what these churches in the Christian, that's what I see as a pattern in the churches, in the now Christian churches, where they, they be talking, they, they, the preacher will talking to demons, and the demon will say, I'm not getting out, there's 20 of us here, ah, I'll be rebellious. The Savior never, ever, ever spoke to them demons, not even once. Now, you, that's something that I just picked up today, that no, there is something that's not making sense here. Something don't, make, don't, don't tie up, because if you read any of the Old Testament, the Savior the Savior now, because the Savior was there in the Old Testament too. Because he keeps quoting in the New Testament that I was with y'all in the desert. Y'all frustrated me in the desert. When we were going from Egypt to, to Promised Land, y'all complaining in the desert, frustrated me. 
That's the Savior now talking in the New Testament, which shows that was Him. Now, remember, you can watch my other video, how the Savior and the Father and the Spirit, how they all mix together. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with, with the Father, and the Father was with. Now, you see that trio. It's confusing, but I've got a video specifically giving you details on how those three are related. So the Word, the Word is the one that was walking in the desert. Son in, I mean, all of them is called Son in the Spirit, it's called Son in the Word, Son in the physical form, it's Son in as well. So the, the, the Word was in the desert. Now, because how I say it's the Word, because it's the, it's the Word that came into the New Testament. But in the desert, it was still in the form, in the Father. The Father didn't, has not yet taken it. He taken the Word out of Him and put it in, the, in another shape, which is the Savior. It was still, so it's still Him in the Old Testament. So now, what I'm trying to show you that the Word never negotiated with the, with the in the Old Testament, the Word never negotiated with the demons, never even spoke with the demons. There's nothing even said about demons in there that the demons were doing this because the Father never negotiated with no demons. You will not see that because the Old Testament is only the Jews, the real, real Bantu people. There's no Roman writers in the Old Testament. That's why you won't see any demons talking in there, talking about you know, the, the, the Savior, the Father talking to the demons or the Word talking to the demons. You won't see none of that. But in the New Testament, there he goes talking to the demons. Only in the Roman writer books. But anyway, I'm just rambling about, about what I just, you know, picked up as a pattern. You won't see this stuff in Google. Only when you start doing scripture study, then you start picking up these disparities. So I don't know whether I'm going to, you know, it's worth my time trying to, you know, dig into further detail on this. But maybe it is. I mean, I'll make a video on it sometime when I've done a lot of investigation and, and see actually what's going on with this. But anyway, the focus on today is to be an overcomer, okay? Be an overcomer as a lifestyle. Be an overcomer as a very everyday living. How you should live. Not just trying to observe the law because observing the law is going to be so, um, um, I don't want to say annoying or you, you'll feel cramped. It won't be easy for you to just keep the law because you'll feel cramped. You'll feel like doing, for as long as it's not part of your lifestyle, then you Constantly be clashing your flesh, trying to look, and but then your body says, "No, you, your marriage is not supposed to be looking." And your brain is saying something. That, you you don't want to be clashing. Just have a lifestyle of this is how it is. You've accepted it. You pray every day. You know, when as time goes on, you start feeling that the demons are not trying to tempt you no more. That's when you start losing interest on the stuff of the world. Then you'll be fully that picture where you're standing on the things of the world. Fully righteous, have your crown, 12th crown, okay? Bye.